Good morning and welcome to our members from St. John's here in Grover, Peshtigo, Wisconsin, and to those who are visiting with us today. Our live stream worship, we're going to be following the general devotion which is found on page 150 in our Lutheran hymnal. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, teach us your ways, that we may walk in your truth. You comfort and help us day by day. We trust your loving care. You are the King of heaven and earth. We give you praise and thanks. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you invite us to pray and promise that where two or three come together in your name, there you are with us. Answer our prayers and fulfill our desires according to your wisdom and love. Strengthen us in the knowledge of your truth and grant us life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We will continue now by singing hymn number 104, Go to Dark Gethsemane, which is in our Lutheran hymnal. today is found in the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 20 verses 17 through 28. This is the reading from the fourth Sunday in Lent. It will also serve as our text for our message today. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside. And on the way he said to them, Look, we are going up to Jerusalem. 
The Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the experts in the law, and they will condemn him to death. They will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock, flog, and crucify him. And on the third day he will be raised. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons, kneeling and asking something of him. He said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Promise that in your kingdom these two sons of mine may sit, one at the right hand and one at your left hand. Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup I am about to drink? They said to him, We are. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and on my left hand is not for me to give. Rather, these places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard this, they were angry with their two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the nations lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It will not be that way among you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you will be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you will be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The words of our text for today. You know, one of the blessings that we have in our church is our church calendar. The fact that every Sunday we can follow the life of our Lord Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation that God has put in the scriptures for us. The important events. Take, for example, Ash Wednesday. We begin the season of Lent, and then from the season of Lent, we know what's coming around the corner. In two weeks, we're going to be looking at Palm Sunday, when Jesus came into Jerusalem triumphantly. Then, on Thursday, when the Lord gathered together with his disciples and washed their feet and instituted the Lord's Supper, and then that very evening in the garden where he prayed and then was betrayed. And on Friday, perhaps the darkest day of our church year, we'll, we will remember what happened outside of Jerusalem on that hill where our Savior was nailed to the cross. And then, his lifeless body, wrapped in linens and sealed in a dark tomb. But then, just again, around the corner, we know Easter Sunday comes, and we know what happened on that day. Jesus rose from the dead. And the yearly rhythm of our life of faith that we hear on Sundays in our worship services can help us grow in our faith. But wait, that rhythm has been disrupted. Everything has been turned upside down. No sports. No school, no restaurants, and now no going to church. It feels like we've all been sent out on a tightrope, walking over a lava pit down in a volcano. Do you remember just this month? On the 5th of March, 
when Nick Walenda did that very thing and walked out over that volcano in Nicaragua? You know, he had a lot more to worry about than just the lava that was down in that volcano. That volcano is one of eight volcanoes that does have a lava lake with a 2,000 degree pool of molten rock. But the volcano also emits a toxic fog, sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen sulfide, and hydrochloric acid. You know, the cable had to be coated specially so it wouldn't corrode as he walked across the volcano. And he had to wear a gas mask and goggles to keep himself from being incapacitated on the walk. And then there was the wind, the wind, and the fact that this was the highest walk that he ever tried, 1,800 feet high. And he admitted later that it was the windiest. In fact, those who watched it on television noticed that midway he was struggling against the wind. And you know, despite the 2,000 degree lava, the gusting winds, the fact that it was the highest and longest crossing of his career, many viewers complained on Twitter that Nick was wearing a safety harness. And he admitted later that being connected to that safety harness gave him a lot of comfort. One wrong step today. Yes, we could all fall. We're walking together this tightrope of the virus. The toxic fumes of fear, uncertainty, concern for family members who are the most vulnerable, the disruptions to our routine, financial concerns, and more toxic winds blowing against us, and most of all, the toxic wind of doubt. The sin of doubt that could tempt us to turn away from the one who can and will help. But thanks be to God, we have a safety net. We are connected to Jesus. He is our safety net. And in our reading for today, Jesus points that out to his disciples when they needed it the most. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside. And on the way he said to them, Look, we are going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests, the experts in the law, and they will condemn him to death. They will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock, flog, and crucify him. And on the third day, he will be raised. Their walk to Jerusalem was heavy with foreboding. Jesus tries to tell his disciples just what was going to happen. He would be betrayed by a friend, handed over to his enemies, sentenced, beaten, whipped, and then face a horrific death, nailed to a cross. He would drink the cup. And then when he was dead, his body would be wrapped in linens and placed in that tomb. You know, this is the fourth time that Jesus 
mentioned to his disciples just what was going to happen, and each time he gave more details. But this time he added the promise, the Easter promise. He would rise from the dead, the safety net. But next comes something you, you wouldn't expect. Instead of questions like who, what, when, where, or why, Jesus is confronted by a mother. The mother of James and John comes forward with a request. A most inappropriate request indeed. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons, kneeling, asking something of him. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Promise that in your kingdom these two sons of mine may sit, one at the right hand, at one, and one at the left. Well, admittedly, these two, James and John, were part of what we could call the big three, Peter, James, and John. The very ones that Jesus took privately up the mountain when he was transfigured and gave them a glimpse of his glory, the ones that Jesus would bring into the garden with him when he would pray about the cup he was about to drink. Now, first of all, we need to notice that these two seem to just ignore what Jesus had said. He was going to to die. And we know how graphically it had been prophesied in the past in the Old Testament, wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. But even more important, the message, he would rise again, the safety net. But these two, and their mother, said, that's not important. What we need to talk about is us, our positions, our future, our glory. They were in total denial about the prospect of Jesus suffering and dying. You see, they had been with Jesus for the past three years, sleeping rough, going hungry at times and condemned and ostracized by many, perhaps even some of their own families. So they did not want to hear that Jesus was going to suffer and die. They wanted him to be victorious and give them places of honor in his kingdom. And the mother of James didn't want to hear it either. Together with her son John, she came and asked, on their behalf. But how did Jesus respond? How did Jesus respond? Let's listen. He said to them, You indeed will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and on my left hand is not for me to give. Rather, these places belong to those for whom they have been prepared for by my Father. When sin rears its ugly head, the sin of me first, the sin of doubt, how does Jesus react? Ever so gently, yet firmly. First, he says to them, you don't know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? And they both answered, yes, we can. And they would indeed suffer many things for the gospel and for Jesus in the future. But Jesus used this as an opportunity to teach. To teach not only James and John and their mother, but also the other disciples. Because the other disciples heard this, 
and it turned their stomachs. They were angry. Wow. How could they ask for that? Angry. Me first. Conflict. How did Jesus address the issue? It's good to gather around Jesus and to listen to what he has to tell us about how we can get along with one another. Conflict today. We're hearing about it. Perhaps some have even seen it. And we laugh and we might even giggle about the fact that people are fighting over toilet paper. But that's what's happening today. People are turning away from what's important and looking at just me, myself, my concerns. And they forget about the safety net. They forget about Jesus. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the nations lord it over them and their great ones exercise authority over them. It will not be that way among you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you will be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you will be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus says, look at me my sacrifice, what I'm going to accomplish for you. He paid the price for our sins. We are free. We are saved. And Jesus is that safety net for us all. And you know, when Jesus appeared again to his disciples on that Easter Sunday afternoon in that closed room and he came to his disciples and opened his hands and there were the marks of the nails and he said to them peace be with you they realized and remembered he is the safety net forgiven, peace, love that we can only find in Jesus. And this is the peace and the love that is so great that should make each and every one of us today be the first to now say to our friends and relatives and neighbors and even strangers, let me let me help you. Amen. We continue now by confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people throughout the world, 
to strengthen believers and to enlighten unbelievers, we pray, Lord, have mercy, for peace and justice among nations, for honest leaders and good neighbors, for the gift of love, for steadfast faith and patient endurance, we pray, Lord, have mercy, for those who suffer pain or sorrow, for the lonely and depressed, for the poor and needy, and for those who love us and those who hate us, we pray. Lord, have mercy. Be gracious to us and defend us by your power and bring us to glory everlasting. Through you, O Lord, we entrust ourselves. Amen. Amen. Father, worry and fear are not from you. In 1 John chapter 4, you remind us that perfect love casts out all fear. We pray that you give us your perfect love. Fill the hearts of all those who are burdened with the fear of this virus, Lord, so that we may know no doubt and that you are bigger than the threat of anything, especially illness. Please comfort those who are living in fear. Free them from the bondage that anxiety creates within. Remind them that you are still on the throne and that you are still in control. Rain down on us the serenity that can only come from the Prince of Peace, Jesus, our safety net. Help those who are living in unease to trust you in this time, so that in times to come we may rest assured that you will be with us until the end of the age. We bring to you such fears and ask you to carry them for us, for we know you cover us with your wings. We pray this in your Son's name, who also taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This is the end of our live stream worship service today. I just wanted to make a comment to everyone who is listening and watching that in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, Paul wrote and said to his son Timothy, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power. And we should remember that verse. I was listening to some news articles this morning and I heard a quote that was very interesting. At a time when the world is full of fear is when we need a fearless church. May the Lord bless all of you, and please continue to look at both our Facebook page and our website for more information as we go forward. God bless you all.